this woman's story is our own. Her fears and struggles are the same ones that you and I have when we're called to obedience. All you have to do is change a few of the names, and what you've got is our own story right here within the pages of the Bible. Because haven't we been called to obedience? Obedience during unusual circumstances. Obedience during difficult times. In fact, for some people, difficult times would be quite the understatement. Food and gasoline prices continue to skyrocket. Cutbacks and layoffs, even when the headlines say that the economy is recovering. And that idiot of a preacher standing up there every Sunday with a basket in his hand asking us to give when we can't afford to pay our own bills. And what you don't know is how that preacher has begged God for another way. You don't know how he has prayed for a financial windfall, a bequest, or money from someone who can easily afford to give. He has asked for anything but to look into the eyes of his faithful members of the congregation each Sunday. People who give when you can't afford to give. All you know is that he asks you to give. And with this widow of Zarephath as your model, you give. It would seemingly be wiser not to give, to hold back. It would seemingly be easier. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And if you don't look out for number one, no one else is going to. <clears throat> but you are obedient to the call of God. And I am humbled by your obedience. For those of you who are obedient, even when it would make more sense to do otherwise, you discovered the same wonders that this unnamed woman did. You have learned what it's like to be in a relationship with the one who has called you to obedience. Somehow, obedience to God in the face of difficulties transforms our relationship, our prayer life, from a periodic check-in into an ongoing daily dialogue. The God who we barely knew becomes our rock and our redeemer. We find that we're able to approach God with our fears and our resentments. And God not only understands, but is willing to gently smooth them out of our lives if we allow it to happen. And like this widow of Zarephath, obedience has taught us that when we have nothing left to give, suddenly miraculously there is enough to carry us through and then some. When we're able to move past our fears that hold us back and tie us to the earth, we learn that God provides us with wings to soar into the heavens. When there seems to be no more strength to carry on, God provides for us an abundance of power that we never would have imagined possible. If we are obedient, God does not forget our obedience, but instead cares for us in our times of need, providing us with all the resources that we need to live life abundantly. <clears throat> obedience, not as an insurance policy against the tough times. Obedience not out of anticipation for a basket full of blessings that we'll get in return. But obedience because of our devotion to the one through whom we move and live and have our being. Obedience because we are in Christ and Christ is in us and there is no other option but to be obedient. 
God calls us to a life of obedience. Certainly, Jesus was that model of obedience. But we have other models. And one of them is an obscure Canaanite woman. So obscure that we've forgotten her name. A woman whose life is tucked away within the pages of our Bible. But a woman who provides for us an example of how to live life obediently to the one who calls us by name. May each of us draw strength and courage from this woman's story when we are afraid to be obedient. May we find inspiration in her life when we wish we could give more but we're afraid of not having enough. When we wish we could do more but feel we have nothing to offer. May her obedience encourage us and may her story provide inspiration and a source of strength when times are tough. And may God bless each and every one of us in our faithfulness and our obedience. Amen.